Caitlin Wong is the Treasurer's Office Asian Pacific American Heritage Month awardee for outstanding achievement in arts and humanity. She left her job in finance and information technology a year before COVID to pursue her dreams as an artist. She immigrated with her family from Taiwan to New York City when she was six years old. She grew up working with her family in a convenience store and laundromat. Caitlin's artwork supports movements such as Women's March Chicago and Chicago Now. Her political work, Where Are You From, was in a group exhibit curated by Jenny Lamb. The exhibit featured artworks by 39 Illinois Asian artists. Where Are You From is a painting of Caitlin with her youngest daughter. The painting is about Asians being seen as perpetual foreigners. Caitlin works with her community. She was one of the many artists that volunteered to help paint the Black Lives Matter mural in Oak Park. And in 2021, she helped to organize an event at the Oak Park Library's display room to give a voice to the AAPI community in Oak Park. So Caitlin, Congratulations and thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much. You know, Caitlin, you uh, had worked uh, outside of art for a while. You gave up a successful career. When did you know that was the right move for you? How did you determine to make that career transition? You know, it wasn't a one day thing. It wasn't like something happened that made me want to do, to do it. It's just more of, it was just time. It was time that a lot of things was going on in the world and I wanted to have my voice out there and I wanted, it couldn't be stifled anymore. And I left a great community of people um, that nurture me, but it was just time to move another direction. And were you always interested in the arts? You feel like that was a voice that you had suppressed for years and then it was time to, to give it voice? Well, you know, um, I came from Taiwan when I was six years old and I, I was by myself a lot, even though I have an older brother, he's seven years older than me. And I worked in the store and a lot of time there was downtime. So there's a lot of drawing going hap happening. And it was something I always did by the side. It was a hobby, you know, I, I won awards in school, but it was not something I feel that I had the permission to internally to pursue until, because as an immigrant, until I feel like I was, um, had the time or the energy to put into it. Right. And when you made that decision, uh, what inspirations do you draw on most for your work as an artist? Um, I think it has to be my kids. Um, so they're, they're nine and 12 years old this year. They'll be turning 10 and 13. You know, I grew up working in a store, um, and a laundromat and you see how it is with your parents working so hard and how much financially and how much emotionally they have to give up to make it in here. And I wanted something more for my kids. I wanted them to like, if they have a hope or something or a dream that they want to pursue, I want them to be able to have the confidence to, to do that. And then I feel like if I didn't have the confidence to do that, it's, you know, I didn't want to be, have that double standard for them. So I wanted to show them that they can be what they want to be. And I don't know what that is, but they're still young enough to figure it out. Right. Well, kids are a great role model, role model, a great inspiration to us. But for others who are experiencing your work, you know, it's very a personal relationship between uh, subjective, the person in the artwork, but uh, what's the message that you hope your audience has received after experiencing your work? So some of my work are political and some are not political. The non-political pieces are landscape paintings, but there's always a sense of like beginnings, new beginnings, friends, or new seasons and gatherings. The political ones really is because of current events that's been happening. And it just sort of weighs on me after a certain point that I feel like I need to release it. So one of the paintings that you were talking about was um, Where Are You From? That was an exhibit and that was, a painting I have with my daughter and she's wearing the Superman cape. She's excited. She's powerful. I'm holding her. I'm wearing my Chinese chi pao dress. And the question is, you know, if you're seen as a perpetual foreigner, how do you teach your kids? How do you teach them Asian identity in a place where people constantly ask you, um, where are you from? What are you like? I want to know. And then you're like, 
okay, this is too much for me. But, you know, in the painting, there's also a sense of hope because my eyes in the painting are closed and so are my kids, my daughter, actually. And the thing is, you know, her future is not for me to determine or anybody else to, to determine. So I want her to stay powerful and I want her to still think about her future and not have other people dictate it. So there's this sense of hope of new beginnings for her, but I'm just there to guide her. And that's for her to realize. Yeah. All right, that's uh, probably good artwork, also good parental advice. <laughs> so uh, the pandemic changed life for a lot of people. You made your career change right before the pandemic, but how has your experience with Slasian changed the course of the pandemic? So how have you seen this work influence other artists and audiences? Yeah, the Slasian was supposed to exhibit um, March of 2020 and everything shut down because of COVID. And then yep. it actually exhibit, they renamed it to be um, Slasian 2.0 in December of 2021. And it, honestly, it was a really great space because you see um, a lot of Asian people with their creation in one, in one place. And it provided a safe space for everybody. And I think with everything going on before this, people did talk about racism, people did talk about discrimination or hate crimes, but it sort of gave, um, at least me, and I think some people I know, an opportunity and sort of like the okay to say, to be honest with people, like, you know, things are happening and we are being affected. So just not sort of shy away from that hard um, communication or discussion about what's going on and just have that honest conversation instead of talking about the weather. You know, you just like, you know, things are rough and I think everyone's going through rough things and let's not hide from that and let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of good advice for life. Uh, as we wrap up, Caitlin, what message or advice do you have for the next generation of artists, especially those within the Asian community? Uh, someone who might be considering a, a path, a career change or, or going down this road? So your voice is your voice and I have a different voice. And if you need to talk, you know, if you need to release it and you can't find the time for it, give yourself permission for like five minutes. Your five minutes might turn out to be 10 minutes next day. And that that's just a way to start going forward. And that's something to realize is that there will be disappointment from other people and there will be disappointment with yourself too, because you're not going to be where you want to be just because you have to work towards that. So find a community of people that will support you or find a place where you can nurture your craft. And then for me, I was able to go to um, a gallery downtown, Palin Chisel, that teaches and also I can work from a model. And just that was just a place that I could work with and give myself permission at least one day a week to be with people that don't judge you. And so I would say be kind, find a support network, and start with five minutes. Start with five minutes to take care of yourself. Well, great. Well, Caitlin, uh, I asked for advice in the arts, but I think you gave advice that could be useful for any of our listeners and in, in different careers. Uh, great to great to hear from you. And I think that's why, Caitlin, uh, you were chosen as the Treasurer's Office Asian Pacific American Heritage Month awardee for outstanding achievement in arts and humanity. Thank Caitlin, you. congratulations and thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much.